policies and procedures. Most factories experience higher worker turnover during their first few years of employment. Therefore, the emphasis should be placed on the onboarding, integration and development of new workers. When new workers are hired at your factory, they will need to learn some important information about working at the factory. The subjects might include introduction to the factory's business, factory rules, safety, and factory's customers' codes of conduct. Often the information is given to new workers in a group orientation session conducted by a human resource staff for an hour or so of show and tell. Just for a moment, imagine you are a new worker. If not, imagine your son, your daughter, your niece or your nephew as the new worker. This is the very first job away from home after the compulsory school education. Perhaps you are only 15 years old. You travelled very far from home in the country and moved to the housing provided by the factory just a day before. You have spent the first night in the dormitory shared by several other workers probably didn't sleep well and now you are sitting in the orientation early in the morning given by the factory. You are tired, nervous and anxious about your job and people of the factory. The orientation session is one of the best times that the factory can demonstrate what they value. Does your factory value workers' contribution to the overall success of the factory? Do you want each worker to participate effectively in sustaining the enterprise and their longer-term employment? Do you want them to sense that the factory management is very pleased to have them come on board? A wise person once said that people may not remember what you said but remember how you made them feel. Workers are human beings with intellect and emotion. From their first day, the management must strive to help the workers feel welcomed and they have significant potential to contribute as a member of the collective body to achieve the factory's and employees' goals. The new employee orientation is often conducted by human resource. Many words the HR person says are new to workers. What the HR staff covers in the orientation is essential information about working at the factory. You need to make sure every new worker remembers them. So, what should the factory do in order that they can remember? Well, Frankly said that people can remember very little of what they hear in an orientation. This does not mean that you should not have an orientation. In fact, such orientation can be very effective if it is conducted in a memorable way by a very good learning facilitator. What they need is for them to be able to learn about the important subjects when they actually want to know about it. Therefore, it is recommended that the factory provides a simply written employee handbook and give it to each new worker at the end of the orientation. This handbook can be done in a variety of styles. It can be in a visual format, like simple drawings, or done in a graphic novel style. The handbook should not be so detailed that it becomes a thick manual. In order to keep it helpful for additional inquiries, it should list references such as telephone numbers of people they can contact or providers of services and or the names of factory's HR staff or worker, representatives the employees can contact for consultation. 
workers should acknowledge receipt in writing so that they value the handbook as official factory reference. Make sure the handbook is updated on a regular basis. There should also be a handbook for managers and HR staff, which may include 1. Philosophy of management or role 2. Employee evaluation 3. Employee coaching 4. Grievance handling 5. Requisition processes 6. Internal forms 7. Wage calculation and other benefits All handbooks should also clearly state offences that are non-negotiable and will result in termination of employment and violations that are reported to legal authorities. Such handbooks can become effective communication tool and reference for everyone in your factory. When policies and procedures are established, informed and enforced, issues in the workplace can be effectively reported and resolved if and when they arise. Safety of workers should always be the priority and any workers in a position where they are required to handle hazardous chemicals, heavy machinery or working in hazard-prone environment should receive safety training on how they can work safely and who to talk to if they are in doubt.